the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Hey, I hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. And I praise God that everybody that's sitting here, they're going to come and listen and fellowship with us this morning. Uh, see, as the day said, they can keep up on YouTube if you got any comments and stuff like that. But I, I wanted to, I had a topic I wanted to cover uh, before the uh, panel shows up. Uh, and it, it, and that the titles over there, you see it, it is, have, do you have joy over one sinner that repented or died? And it's an either or question. Is it, do, 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 you, do you focus on rejoicing when someone turns their life over, uh, repentant, change their way of doing things? And, and, I, and I guess a lot of cases when we sit there and ask that question, some people say, well, what things I'm doing wrong? And that's, that's the only thing that you probably need to focus on is what is it that I need to repent from? And, you know, I've I, I said many times and i said again concerning the fruits of the Spirit. You know, the, 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 the Scripture said that we're supposed to bear fruits of the Spirit. We're supposed to uh, operate according to uh, the characteristics that comes along with the Holy Spirit. Not act being religious because that's I think that's the biggest thing I wanted to, to, to discuss a little bit with you this morning is the it's time to stop being religious because religious folks history has shown that uh they more rejoice over killing somebody <laughs> than, than, than somebody repenting. You know uh and look at the history we talk about we talk about all the way back to Jesus how people responded uh, in a negative way concerning uh, the good things that Christ was bringing. You know, in the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and, and even the, the, the people, the, the crowd too, right? That, that when, when it came down to crucify Jesus, you know, even Pontius Pilate was sitting there saying, well, what has he done that, that warrants the uh, crucifixion? You know, capital punishment. You know, I mean, they 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 one time they sit there and they wanted to stone them and and they they call them a sinner, they call them names. We're gonna to try to talk about that today in the panel. Uh, but some of you have seen the, the the fact is that religious religion have caused wars to occur. <laughs> uh, religion has caused people to, to have like the Spanish Inquisition, and those who don't know about that, hey, or even the, the, the time of slavery, you know what I mean? The atrocities that occurred during those times, or even uh, lynching, and, 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 and I'm talking about just, just people robbing and stealing and killing. And some of those people do that and say they do it in the name of the Lord. People, religious, religious people would take a plane and run it, fly it into a building, kill thousands of people. It caused a war, you know. We've been in a war in Afghanistan for like 20 years, all because of people uh, using religion as a justification to do the atrocities that occur. So I think it's something, it's something to think about. So do we rejoice when a sinner repentance? Do you rejoice? I mean, do you? I know sometimes you probably say, "Well, you're a sinner yourself, right?" And, that, and that's that's something to, to think about. But what about the people that you? really feel that I'm not meeting any of the standards you consider important, right? So so one of the things is and I know I want to show these share these scriptures with you so we can do this before the uh panel shows up and we'll we'll shift to another subject when that does occur. But until that time let's let's look at this. Uh this right here. You know, yes, uh some people sit there as a question well <laughs> Doing ministry, they got a backdrop. What do you want? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's about the word, right? It's not about people. It's about the word of God. And it's not about challenges. It's about trying to say, what does the word say? Right? 
we talk about the fact that we want to make sense and understand of God's word. We want to, because we as the body of Christ has that responsibility. And it's not, it's not dedicated for a few, it's specifically for all of us to study the word of God. Just like Nehemiah 8. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused you to understand the reading of the word. That's what we want to do too. And that's what is so important. The Bible says for you to study to show yourself a proof unto God, not unto man. I know man needs to you give an endorsement if they want to. But the bottom line is you don't need it. You need to get and study the word of God for yourself. And that's what sometimes ministry is about is trying to get the word of God, man, and, and, and see what the word says. And, and I think we can start from there. Here's an example when I asked a question about do you rejoice? Do you understand that heaven rejoice when a sinner repentance? You know, it's not about trying to uh, throw somebody in the well or, or burn them alive. It's all about trying to bring people up because it's God's will for all men to be saved. <laughs> and if that's that's his will, then that should be our will as well, right? Because thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Look at this in Luke uh, 15, verse 3. And he speaks this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which was lost. Verse 7, which is the same concept I really want to put in a narrative for you to think about. Verse 7, I say unto you, likewise, joy shall be where? 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 In heaven. Over what? One sinner repentance more than over 90 and nine just persons which need no repentance. They, heaven rejoices when, when all of us come into the understanding. Heaven rejoices when one of us come into the understanding and rejoices in the things of God. Heaven does. And that's the God, that's the gospel that you want to preach to people because people need to understand that heaven is just waiting for you. You as one individual. We collectively as the body of Christ. But one, just one person at a time. God rejoices when a sinner repentance. The question is, do you focus more on the desire to see them die in their sin or, or get torn up and abused or, 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 or wait for the world to just put them down? Are, are you more enjoy talking about sinners uh, opposed to encouraging all of us to, to change, right? I just just something you got to think about because that, that, that's one of the things is that heaven wants everybody to repent and come into the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what we want to do, right? Because that's what that's, you want to be glad in fact is that that's what heaven did for you. And that's what heaven would do for all that come to the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. He said in verse 8, either one woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she loses one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligence until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls a friend and a neighbor together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Verse 10, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repentance. Amen. Repent, a change of heart, change of mind, change of direction. It doesn't mean you have arrived. <laughs> it means you have now moved in the direction of where God is pleased with you, not man. And I think that's the biggest concern I have concerning, you know, religion. Religion tries to get people to be more focused on uh, pleasing them, you know, pleasing the doctrine. You know, I mean, 
many times I sit there and we, we talk about, I see where in religion, we, 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 have, we have put religion in the politics to a point. Well, I see where you have people sit there and say, if you come in with a mask, I'm going to kick you out of the congregation. And you sit there and say, how did the mask, how, how did the vaccination and unvaccination, how did all of that wind up and weave into the gospel? How is that goes into the fact that they haven't just rejoiced that the person repented, and now we're, we're mad because the person doesn't do it our way. H how's that? How is it that we so quick to, to, to fight each other and, 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 and even use politics to do things bad to one another and, 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 and believe that, that you got to go my way or the highway? What, what is that? What is that with the gospel? The gospel is to bring people to Jesus Christ. The gospel is not to be mindful of the things of man, but the things of God. We rejoice when a person starts thinking about the things of God, regardless of who they are. That's what gospel is all about. That's what we're supposed to be able to teach. And we're supposed to be rejoicing every time somebody decided to say, Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. And I want to go his way. Religious people have a, have a tendency to want to pick up a stone and, and hurt somebody. Quickly. You know, and, and that's something that we got to watch out for because it ain't about uh, the stoning of people, putting people down. I don't care. What, it doesn't matter who you are. You you got to see, see what matters is are you bearing the fruits of the spirit? of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there's no law. Are you bearing fruits of love to one another? Or are you bearing fruits of rudeness, of death? You know, I mean, that that's 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 where it comes down to. Are we focused on death or focus on life? Look at this right here. This is interesting. It says here, Matthew 23, 29. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tomb of the prophets and gone is the sepulchers of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. You know, I, I look at that and I think about the fact is that uh, how many times you even talk about uh, the atrocities of yesterday, and I'm talking about atrocities in the past, things that people have done in the past, the, the other history. I'm talking about, this going with the, even the Civil War, you know, uh, where there was the, 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 the quote some people said it was for uh, state rights, but reality state rights to what? Have slaves, right? And 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 and, and yet we, we, we talk about and, and honor Jesus but we, we, some people want to glorify people who did things that led to captivity and to the abuse that came along with it for hundreds of years. And yet we think it's supposed to be glorified. Or we don't even want to talk about it because we don't want the other history to come through. And I understand. I understand the, the, the past is the past. But Jesus was saying something here, though. In verse 31, wherefore be ye witness unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. You are the children of them which, which uh, hurt other people, right? <laughs> the, that, that's the question, is that how long do we sit there and focus on uh, doing things that are not acceptable in the eyes of God? And I and I, I really want to think of, really think about that and, and focus on doing that for the acceptable in the eyes of God. I'm sitting there trying to get this. I thought I'd counsel this thing out, but apparently it's still going on. I thought I took all the alarm clocks out, but I guess I did. And then I'm counsel that. And I'm still can't even count it off. So hopefully it's gone. I think I got all of them. Let me make sure. I ain't gonna say it's going off because it's just just 
jack things up a lot. But anyway, the 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 point I'm going to get back to is that he said here, wherefore thirty one, you be witness unto yourselves that you are the children of them which kill the prophet. And how many people have done that, right? How many people have done our children of those who have done bad things, right? I mean, just. I mean, that goes all the way across, not just uh, whites, that goes across with blacks. I mean, did some people sit there and they, 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 they attribute slavery to just, just the people in this country. But in reality, it happened even with those who helped capture slaves. Hey, brother, eyes are coming up. So the thing is that we got to sit there and, and ask ourselves, do we want to do the will of God? And the will of God is, that we rejoice, hallelujah, when, when, when one sinner repents us. Because that's what he wants. Because we, we don't want to be saying and glorified that we are the children of the generation of the past that killed the righteous, you know? Went to war for, for the wrong reason, did the wrong thing. No, no, we want to rejoice when one sinner of repentance, because that's, that's what God wants us to do. That's who we are. We're supposed to do His will and rejoice in His will. And I think I think we'll do a great deal when we do that. He said in verse Matthew's uh, 20 to 32, uh, once again, he says, Feel ye of then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, you generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? If you are the children of the people who killed the prophet, of the righteous, of the innocent, if you are the people who rejoice and, and doing bad things, you are the children of them, then, then you need to make sure that we don't be like that and, 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 and not cause ourselves to, to harm other people. Amen? So, Brother Azul is here. So what I wanted to do is shift now. Uh, and go. We, we start off with a subject last week uh, where we dealt with uh, what does God, who God said we are. And, and I added to those, those scriptures uh, something about how, what people say that you are. And, and I wanted to make sure I covered those again if I didn't uh, about the fact is that God God Christ asked that question, who people say that he is? And then the question sometimes is, who do what what is the tricks of the devil used to to uh, put people down, uh, crucify them, uh, and, 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 and say they're opposite of what God wants them to be. So how you doing, brother? Allison? 